Swifter, we're going to finish up our hackathon app. We're going to load an image from Google Cloud Storage for Firebase. We're going to load a document from Cloud Firestore. Grab a reference in that document to a saved Cloud Firestore file containing an image and use that reference to load the file from Cloud Firestore, converting the data to a UI image and displaying it in our app. Let's code. All right, Swifter. So up first, we're going to return to our team.swift file. And at the very end of this file, just before the last curly, we're going to add a new method and we're going to call that load image. So we'll say func load image, open parens. This is going to need an escaping closure. So we'll say completed. That'll be our keyword colon at escaping, then empty parens, arrow empty parens, open and close curlies. Then we need to declare a storage object to work with storage. So we'll say let storage equal capital storage dot storage, open and close parens. Below that, we need to create a storage reference. So we'll say let storage ref equals storage dot reference, just the one with the open and close parens. And then remember how we navigate through the different levels of cloud storage. Everything is called a child. So we say dot child. And this first one is self dot document ID. So that's the bucket that we're inside of or that little folder icon. And we'll say dot child. And this one will be self dot app image UUID. That's the name of the file itself. Now that we have a storage ref, we know where we're going. We can call the get data method on it. So we'll say storage ref dot get data and select this one storage download task. So that's got the max size in it. Now for our max size, we'll set that at five star 1024 star 1024. Now if you multiply this all out, this is the number of bytes or it'll be five megabytes. That should be plenty for any individual screenshot. If you had really big files here, you wouldn't want to use this technique. You'd actually want to get data and then save it to a local file on the phone. But for screenshots, five megabytes will be plenty. Then let's double click on the completion handler to get into the trailing closure format. I'll put a little comment up here to remind me that five megabytes equals five times 1024 times 1024. And I'll name our optional data data and our optional error error. Now first let's guard up to see if we've got an error. So we'll say guard error equals equals nil. So that's the condition the guard needs to meet in order to allow the code to pass past the closing curly. Otherwise else we'll open and close curlies and we'll print error could not load image from bucket string interp for file string interp bucket is self.documentid and the file is self.appimageuid. Angry emoji. And below that we need to return. So we'll say return and we'll put our completed flag right after that. So we say completed open and close parens. Now, if we get below this guard statement, then we want to take the data that we got. We know we've got valid data. We know we don't have an error either, and we'll convert this to an image. So we say guard let, we'll call it downloaded image equals UI image, open paren, select the option for data in here. Notice that this is going to return an optional, but we know we got data if we've got this far, so we can force unwrap data inside of it. We'll pass in lowercase data exclamation point. We'll say else open and close curlies. And you know what? The else condition is an error and it's going to be almost identical to the error above. So I'm just going to highlight these two lines, copy them, paste them down below, but I'm going to change it so that it says could not. And then instead of load image, I'll say convert data to image and I'll keep the bucket and the image ID the same and the app image UUID the same. Finally, if this guard lets us through, then we know we've got a valid image. So we're going to set self.appImage equal to downloaded image. And on the next line, we'll say completed open and close parens. Super work. Let's finish this up inside of team detail table view controller.swift. Now we'll make our call to our team.loadImage method, and we'll do that inside of viewDidLoad. Why don't we do it just after we have our nil check on team? So we'll say team.loadImage. And then inside of the completion handler and between the curlies, we'll say self.imageview.image to update our image view equal to self.team.appImage. That's the image we just got. Excellent. Then back a few videos ago, when we first got our coordinates, I was updating the team project description with the coordinates. And I don't really want to do that. That was just to check to make sure that we got our coordinates OK. So I'm going to scroll down to the first function inside of our GMS autocomplete extension. That's the view controller GMS autocomplete view controller function. And in here, I've got team.project description equals, and then it's a coordinate string afterward. I'm just going to highlight that whole line and delete it. That's perfect. So now I can go ahead and build and run. Let's see how this looks. So we load in our three hackathon teams from our Cloud Firestore database. I click on Baldwin's Byte. No errors on the side. And if I scroll down, I can see the image that I saved in the previous video. Nice.
I'll cancel out. Let's click on the Swift Ets and add an image here. So I'll click on the camera icon, click Photo Library. I've got an image up here of Grace Hopper, so we'll assume they did the Grace Hopper app. That image is added perfectly. No errors over here in the console. Let's click on Save. And again, a thumbs up flashed by. No errors at all. Looking good. Let's just check to make sure that it loads. So I'll click on the Swift Ets again, and here it is down below. Hello, Admiral Grace Hopper. Whoops, inadvertent map scroll. But let's cancel out of this. Finally, let's make sure that we have no errors when we add a brand new team and a brand new image along with that team. So I'll click on plus. Let's imagine Georgia Tech wants to join our hackathon. Their team is the Swift Stingers. We'll click on find location, do a search for Georgia Tech. Click on that. Here we go in the map. We see the ATL showing up. Click on the camera icon, click photo library. I happen to have loaded up a goofy image here of a Georgia Tech logo in the middle of an iPhone. I'm going to click that to add it. It shows up on the app. I think that's stingworthy. Let's go ahead and click on save. No errors. Click back. The image loads too. Folks, you're done with the Hackathon app, and you went over a ton of concepts, including creating a Firebase Cloud Firestore project, working with Google Sign-In, working with Firebase Auth UI, saving data in Cloud Firestore, loading data from Cloud Firestore, using the Google Place Autocomplete SDK, setting up a Google Cloud project to use Google APIs, plotting locations on a map with MapKit, selecting images from the photo library or camera using a UI image picker, saving an image to Cloud Storage with Firebase, and loading an image from Cloud Storage with Firebase as well. You are full stack, baby. Hope you're feeling good about your skills, Swifter. Another app under your belt. Keep at it.